Gotcha. You're not coming out this time to browse my baby trees. Okay, Java, leave it. Enough. Come here. Come on, pup. Good boy. You done. Clever boy. Some of the sheep are making their way to the lime tree because it's starting to rain. Very light sprinkly rain, not much. And look at what I found. You are bold. You are very bold. These are my nice new shoes. You are such a puppy. That's what happens when the phone call happens. I was in my Wellington boots in the kitchen and these were sitting on the floor. Bold puppy. So I'm coming over here. You can see there's a, this is a, this is a rootstock tree and this is another rootstock tree that were grafts that were failed during my grandfather's time. I think they're pear trees but they never bear fruit because they're the rootstock. This is an oak tree and I planted this lovely red oak um, earlier this year and I always worry when trees turn their colors early and they're babies that I didn't look after them enough during the year during the growing season. It got lots of water. I love red oaks. 
Red oaks are so beautiful, particularly in autumn. They're such a beautiful color of autumnal red. So I really, really hope that I watered it enough through the summer months and that it's not dying and it's just, it'll come back stronger next year. So I will be worrying about this tree all the way through the winter. This and some of the other red oaks. If we go over here, you can see, look at the light of that. It's just so glorious, the light of that in the, with the autumnal sun. In here are all the apple trees that I sowed and they're doing really well. And you can see uh, the plants that I sowed in that raw soil are doing really, really well as well. Look at that, full of pollinators. They're just buzzing with um, the, oh, well, maybe you can't see, but they're buzzing. There's lots of pollinators in them. I can see them flying around. Maybe they're not coming up in the video, but, oh, and a very cross blackbird very cross blackbird but these apple trees are looking really well and we're really well mulched when uh, oh I've got to trim that sucker off right there so they were really well mulched and this stuff is growing this is a, a nitrogen producing uh, green manure is what a lot of gardeners use it at called facilia and the pollinators love it but there's vetches in there that I sowed and um, sandfoin. I don't see the sandfoin because it's been a really cold year. So sandfoin hasn't been uh, very productive, but maybe next year. And all this sow thistle, sheep love sow thistle. So I'm allowing this to uh, pollinate and germinate and spread seeds. So it's looking really, really very productive. Oh my goodness, what is that huge thing? Look at that. There is a huge leafed plant in there. No idea what that is. No idea. Well, I'm gonna have to get in closer to have a look. See, some of the vetches are doing really well. This is a vetch that I sowed. It is a, a, a um, hybridized vetch, but that's fine. Once you get them going, they'll acclimatize to here. But look at the amount of nitrogen. Whoop. I'm stepping over this wire and I'm getting caught. Oh, oh, there we go. And I caught and fell. <laughs> okay, I've got to untangle myself and get uncaught. <laughs> the sheep netting netted a human. <laughs> okay, I escaped. But what I was saying was, look at the size of these dock leaves. They're huge. Massive dock leaves. That, and that's because of the facilia and its pollinating abilities. Look at that hoverfly right there. Look at that beautiful hoverfly. And a huge, another huge, look at the size of that dock leaf. Massive dock leaves. Uh, this is mallow. I know that. I love mallow. I'm a big fan of mallow. And here's another mallow. But I don't think that's a mallow. That's huge. Oh man, look at the size of this uh, plantain. Huge. And that is because of the phacelia and the vetches. But I don't know, this must be a giant mallow or something. <gasps> look, 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 it is. It's a giant mallow. Wow, cool. There's a poppy. I think that's a poppy. Is that a poppy? I think that's a poppy. Yeah, that's a poppy growing in amongst there. There's another mallow. Wow, some of these plants are huge. Oh, here's borage. This is borage. Another pollinator's favorite. And more borage. Excellent. There's some good vetch there. There's some more sow thistle. So all kinds of species are coming up in here. But that's cool. That is a massive mallow. Look at that. Glossy big leaves. Magnificent. Oh, there's another poppy in there, down there. 
Ah, uh, this is great. These apple trees are gonna love the fertility of the ground here. Look at this baby apple tree right here. Oh, it's got um, bindweed growing up it. Now that I will take down because I don't want the bindweed to take over in here. So I'll just pull that up here. Ah. Uh, there, and it'll die. So this is American pokeweed. Yeah, this is looking fabulous. And here's my shadow. And nettles, the nettles are looking very healthy. But it's great how these trees, well, this one's now wrapped. See, the problem with the bindweed is its huge leaves will overshadow the apple leaves. And when this tree is so young, if the bindweed takes over, it'll bend over under the weight. So I'm not a fan of bindweed on baby plants. So I don't see bindweed on any of the others. Let's see, going along here. Let's see how this tree is doing well. Yeah, they're all, all my babies are doing really well. I'm very pleased with that. A bit of rubbish. I don't know what that is. Some sunbather plant. Probably in the compost. Anyway, I think this is doing really well. My baby trees. And one, I forgot to take the apples off, is producing some apples. The only th other thing besides bindweed that I'm taking out would be uh, rapeseed. Because I don't want... There was a few times when there was rape in here and I took it out. I didn't want rape to be in here. So... Let's see if I can see, catch any pollinators at work. It's very hard because there a lot of small ones are working away on the Phacelia. You can't, you get close and the, then they fly away. No, I'm very pleased with this. It's looking great. Look at that. Phacelia. I've just picked up these two apples off this tree and it's called the Kilkenny Pearman. So I must try it and see what they taste like. It looks like it's a hybrid between a cooker and an eater. Mmm! Oh! That is good. Oh, the flavor in that. Wow. That's delicious. Mmm. Mm. Just a small gardening thing. I love this hydrangea. It's got a very old fashioned vintage look. And I planted it with this uh, pink tobacco. But next to it is my potted lily. Um, pineapple lily and look the colors are very similar to that so maybe next year I'll put it in a bigger pot so that they can be together be kind of interesting the combination of them ah got everybody asking me questions 
this has to go under that. So this is why I'm here. Yeah, look at this. I know, hello, how are you? You beautiful kitty. Now I'm very pleased with the pots this year. They're looking great. Look at the pineapple lilies are fantastic. They're really looking good. So dogs, cats. Oh look, she's found the best spot. The northwest winds don't get her there. It's lovely and sunny and warm and cozy, as is the cat. <laughs> Look at those pots, looking fantastic. Oh, I hope this doesn't all freeze tomorrow. We're due to get very, very cold blast in the northwest. I tipped the pot and scootled the water container into it, or the water tray. Hydrangea, they like being moist. Hydro, oh, that nearly happened. I felt you getting up my back, but you some reason jumped down. Isn't that right? You're so good there. Yes, yes, you're so sweet. And you're so jealous. Okay, on to the next thing. Well, that was interesting. This wasn't supposed to happen. This happens every day. A fresh bit of grass is frightfully exciting for the horses. And the dogs all get hang out with me. Now the horses have settled. I haven't quite finished putting up the fence yet. Getting there. <laughs> <laughs> 